In this lesson we're going to look at some of the uses of carboxylic acids. Now the first thing is obviously that carboxylic acids are acids. So what you can do with an inorganic acid such as sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid you can also do with a carboxylic acid. They follow the same rules. So the first thing is that you can make salts with carboxylic acids. So we can write a general equation we can say that an acid, for example, plus a metal will produce a salt plus hydrogen. So let's take a specific carboxylic acid. In this case, we'll use ethanoic acid and we'll react it with, for example, calcium. OK, so when we add the calcium to ethanoic acid, you're going to see bubbles emerging because hydrogen gas is released. and we're going to get a salt which is called calcium ethanoate. So let's look a bit more closely at this salt. Okay, looking at the structural formula, so you've got the structural formula for ethanoic acid with the carboxyl group here shown in red. So what's going to happen is that the calcium is going to displace the hydrogen here from the carboxylic acid. That's going to combine with another hydrogen to produce the hydrogen gas. And what we'll be left with is a salt so let's just write out the simple equation. So this is the ethanoate ion. Okay, again here, this is the ethanoate ion. All right, and as calcium has a valency of two plus, and the ethanoate ion has a valency of minus one, then you will need, then the calcium would join on with two ethanoate ions. All right, so we can make salts with carboxylic acids. We can also make soap. So first of all, what we're going to say is this, is that where you have a carboxylic acid, such as this one, with a long carbon chain, that is also known as a fatty acid. Okay, so fatty acids are just carboxylic acids with very long carbon chains. This is commonly known as stearic acid. So what we do in chemistry is we can represent these long hydrocarbon chains, which we'll call alkyl chains or the alkyl group, with the symbol R, with the letter, with the capital R. Okay, so this is the alkyl group, and that saves us having to write out long formula, especially where long chains are involved, of no specific length really. So this is our shortened symbol for stearic acid. OK, so what happens in the manufacture of soap is that this stearic acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to produce a salt called sodium stearate. So that's basically the neutralisation reaction. You've got an acid plus an alkali or base produces a salt plus water. OK, and this sodium stearate is then used in the manufacture of soap. So this is a very, very simplistic description and you know the the manufacturing process is a lot more complicated than this but we don't need to go into that so what you really need to know is that carboxylic acids with long chains are called fatty acids okay these are then reacted with sodium hydroxide to produce sodium stearate which is then used to manufacture soap okay the third use for carboxylic acids is as a preservative in foods Okay, so you've got vinegar here being used to preserve these pickled eggs. So you'll remember that foods weren't originally pickled in this way because it makes them taste nice, although the vinegar or the ethanoic acid does actually help to improve the taste. But the reason why these things were added to vinegar in the first place is because long ago we didn't have fridges or anything like that. And it was the only way of keeping the food for long periods of time safe from bacteria because the bacteria will not survive in acidic conditions okay so the ethanoic acid helps to kill bacteria now the th now the next sorry actually that should be number three in our description of uses right? and number four carboxylic acids are used to produce esters which we will look much more closely when we look at esters on their own Okay, now esters are organic compounds that smell nice. 
So wherever you get a, a nice smelling thing in nature, whether it's a fruit or a flower, for example, there we go, then that will be some type of ester which is producing that nice smell. So lavender flowers produce some type of ester which smells nice, okay? And you also find esters, for example, in wine. These help to make the wine smell nice. You know, and these wine testers go around shoving the glass of wine under their nose, smelling it, and they can, you know, predict where the wine was grown by smelling the esters that are produced by that wine. Okay, and so how are esters produced? Just briefly, they're produced by reacting an alcohol with a carboxylic acid. Okay, now we will look at this more closely later on, and that will produce our ester and water. So this hydrogen and the OH group will combine to produce water and we'll be left with the ester which is ethyl ethanoate. Okay so this is actually the ethanoate group and this is the ethyl group which is an example of an alkyl chain. Okay, Ethyl because in this particular case there are two carbons in the chain. 